Hello, welcome to another exciting creature tutorial. This is a tutorial on the Flow VFX system, which is the particle system of creature. And this is another series in the advanced Flow VFX tutorial, where I'm going to teach you how to use the Flow VFX system to actually work with the timing of your animation. Now, as you know, animation is all about timing, and Flow actually allows you to create animated knots. So you can pre define your own animated knots, link them up in the procedure animation system to actually spawn or emit your particles exactly how you want, you know, based on your animation timing, right? So you can actually create your own variables, your own animation variables, and then link it up, pipe it into whatever inputs, whatever inputs the nodes of the flow VFX system allows, and actually do cool stuff, right? So you can actually, for example, change the color of particles over time based on your own custom animation spline knots, you know, that you've defined in the animation spline knots uh, key, key, keyframe view. You can actually spawn, emit particles whenever you want based, again, on your custom keyframe data. You can change sizes, et cetera, et cetera. It's a super powerful. Right, and so we are going to. Sh I'm going to show you exactly how this is done, and this is exactly how the animated this this kraken monster was done. Like, see how the kraken actually emits different particles underwater based on the timing. See how when it swims up, it emits a particle, and then moves up again and emits another bunch of particles. It's all based off keyframe animation timing. It's really cool, really powerful stuff. So without further ado, let's jump in. Okay, so here I have a new animation that I've created. And before I begin, I would recommend that you actually watch the previous flow tutorials on how to get set up. This is more of an advanced flow tutorial. I assume you already know the basic concepts of setting up a particle solver, uh, setting up a radio source, but I'm going to jump right in and show you how to do animation timing with flow using the various uh, nodes of, of the flow system. Okay, so here I have my scene, super simple. If I play the animation, you will see that I have a bunch of bubbles, very simple particle bubbles emitting from just, you know, the default origin of the scene. Nothing fancy. In fact, the simplest flow setup you can ever imagine. Here is the setup. I have a single radio source and I have a single particle solver. Again, super simple stuff. Um, I recommend you watch the introductory flow tutorials on how to set this up. Right. And I have the sprite image of a bubble, which I'm emitting from the origin. So if I play it again, you can see the bubbles emitted again. Okay. Now, what we're going to do now is this is kind of boring, but I actually want to actually emit particles based on the frame on, on some, some criteria. And in, in, in particular, I want to actually control when these particles are emitted. I want to emit them specifically at a keyframe. So how do I do that? Well, in Flow, it's very simple and actually quite powerful, the system. So right click, yeah. And what I'm going to do now is I go to the data sub menu and I click on the animation knots, right? And so what this does is this actually allows you, you can see when I click on this, this, let me just pull this window up. You can see that particle val zero, see val zero is here, right? This actually shows up in the keys knots view. So essentially I've created a new anima animated variable, a custom animated variable that I can control myself keyframe it however I want, and then I can actually connect the output value to to actually control any of the inputs of any of basically almost every single node in flow. This is extremely powerful. You can imagine I can control color, I can control density, I can control radius, I can control timing, fading, whatever you want, you know, different curves, different simulated sol simulation solver uh, inputs and pipe them, you know, control them all from keyframes. There's a, the possibilities are actually quite endless, but I'm going to try something simple now. So let's change the name, right? Let's call it, say, bubbles. Yeah. So I'm going to call this bubbles. And so if I click on this, you can see it's called particle bubbles, particle underscore bubbles. Okay. So that's my flow variable, right? And what I do now is I just, you know, connect up the out value. And this time I want to control the emission of the particle. So I'm going to, oh, it says incorrect types. He says, I want to connect the alt val with the spawn num, but it doesn't allow me to do that. Why is that? 
Well, that's because the out val is a floating point, or rather a decimal value, right? But as you know, to spawn particles, you can only spawn, spawn discrete values or integer values. I cannot spawn half a particle. It doesn't actually make any sense. So you're probably wondering why in a how, now how, how, how are we going to resolve this issue? It's very simple. Again, right click on the flow submenu. And now we have a go to the operations submenu. And now we have a bunch of operators we can work on. Now, we what we want to do is we want to convert a floating point or a decimal value into an integer. So it says cast a float into an int. I click on that. Okay. And now all I need to do is take the output value and then connect it to the float value. So that works. No error was thrown. <laughs> all right. And then I connect the green circle again, the the integer value into the spawn num. So now this works. Okay, so what happens now? Let's run the simulation. Let's see what we get. Okay, so I ran a simulation and nothing happens. Why is that? Well, it actually makes perfect sense. Why is that? Because if you look at this graph right now, I have my bubbles animated variable, right? And that actually shows up in my my animation. Key. It's basically a, a, a keyframe knot that I can keyframe. And this is piped into the cast float to int, so I convert the decimal to a integer, nothing fancy. And then I pipe it directly into spawn num. So essentially what I'm saying is that I am going to pipe the value of bubbles, which is this guy over here, bubbles, into the spawn num. So this will be overwritten. It's no longer going to be one. It's going to be whatever value is in bubbles. And what is bubbles right now? Bubbles is zero, right? So I can change this. If I were to change the actual value, I keyframe it. So now it's I keyframe keyframed it to one, right? And let's run the sim again, and let's see what happens. Oh, there you go. See now, actually, a bubble is coming up, right? Now, what happens is if I come over here, and let's say I go to frame thirty. Okay, let's say frame thirty, and I still set it to one. Okay, and then I'm going to shut the bubbles off. So I'm going to come to frame 31, and I'm going to set the new value to zero. All right. So from frame 30, I have a value of one. At frame 31, I have a value of zero. Right. So now, basically, if I look at the splines over here, you can see that essentially, let me just make this a bit larger. Right, so from from frame zero, I go all the way up to frame thirty, and then I shut the bubbles off. It drops straight to one, uh, to zero. Sorry, from one to zero. Right, and so let's run the sim, and let's see what we get. Okay, so and you see, see that? So now at frame thirty, there's still bubbles. At frame thirty one, I shut the bubbles off, so it's zero, and then there's no longer any spawning. Okay, makes sense, right? And so I can do the same thing again. I can go to frame 60 again, no bubbles, and then I turn the bubbles on. This time I'm going to make them two. So I'll spawn two. The spawn num is two, but again, you know, it's spawning every frame, so it accumulates. So it's actually a high particle of bubble num, bu bubble num number. So let me run it again and let's see what we get, right? So bubbles, no bubbles, and bubbles. You see that? So it's all based off timing now, right? Once it hits frame 61, the number of bubbles really increase. Right. So I have a slight pause in, you know, at frame 31, and then I increase the bubbles to, to two. Right. And then similarly, I can do the same thing again. Let's go to frame 105. Right. So I'll, you know, set the bubbles to two. I'll stick it at two. What we had, and then at frame 106, let me turn the uh, faucet off. No more bubbles. Yeah. Rerun the simulation, and let's see what we get. We should actually have bubbles, no bubbles, bubbles, and then no bubbles again. At frame 106, the bubble faucet or the spawn, <laughs> spawner is turned off. right? And that's really all it is. Super simple and extremely powerful. So let's repeat this again. Let's recap this again. First of all, you create the animation knots. You right click, go to data, and then you select animation knots. Right? Then you pipe the output value, depending on what you're trying to control. Now, if you're trying to control something like color or size, you can directly pipe the output value directly in there. You don't actually have to convert it to an integer because these values are decimal values, right? Especially for sizes or the, the velocity, you can directly just, let me just show you, for example, I can just um, delete the connection and I can directly pipe this into say position. And that works because these are 
these are also floating point or decimal values. But for the case of spawn num, which is why I wanted to demonstrate this case, if you're trying to control something which is an integer or discrete value, you would have to cast it or convert it from a floating point or decimal into an integer, right? Because you cannot, again, spawn half a bubble. That doesn't make any sense, right? But that's all really it is. That's all it is, right? So you create an anim animation knots node, and then you you give it a name, whatever you want. I call it bubbles. <laughs> and then you can basically keyframe it however you want in the timeline to control whatever node you want with the the uh, flow, uh, you know, particle solver. So so this is like exactly how the animation for this this kraken or squid type character was actually done right so you can see in this example right i have animated this character now let's take a look at this character itself it's kind of interesting uh the bones themselves they have a bunch of move balance motors all over you know tr just trying to give some some great motion uh secondary motion and the band physics you can see it's it's all going through the different tentacles, right, to get secondary motion. And there's a keyframe animation for the base root bone over here. So we're we're sort of traversing the the entire the entire scene. It's it's moving along. Now what happens, what's really interesting about this, of course, is we're not actually talking about the Kraken itself. We're talking about the particle system. Now let's take a look at it as well. So there is the Ink bell. Ink is the black ink that this kraken is actually spewing. Look at that, right? And it's look look at how it's it's spewing the the the, the ink. It's actually spewing it at specific instances in the timing, right? I've actually keyframed it, right? You see that? So this ink bell over here. Let's actually clear everything so you can see this more clearly, right? So. If you were to take a look at this, let's look at the spline, it's probably easier to tell, right? So look at this. So I'm going, yeah, see that? So look at how it's, there's no ink, right? And then here it turns off, turns on the ink, and we go forwards, the ink gets spewed out, right? And then all the way here, and then we turn off the faucet, no more, right? And then we keep going, and then here we turn it on again. Right, so the, the ink comes out again, and and then we turn it off at the final frame, and there's no more ink. Right, and of course the bubbles are always get emitted; they're actually embedded in the mesh of the different tentacles. That's pretty standard stuff. Watch the previous tutorials on how to learn how to emit, you know, standard particles from embedded meshes. That's again a very simple topic that flow is really good at. But yeah, so to get particle timing or any kind of timing, you want to drive any kind of node procedural system through keyframes, use the animation knots node in flow and you get the result like this. Very cool stuff. So again, I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. I hope you enjoy flow and I hope you enjoy creature. There are many, many amazing and powerful concepts you can use to get your animations out with creature. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks for watching and happy animating.